there's one thing you can do that knocks out a couple of problems. The problems are low honey production and slow brood rearing. Bees will not put up honey as quickly or produce brood as quickly if they are stressed. One of the easiest things that you can do to keep your bees unstressed or de-stressed is to keep your hives ventilated properly. The easiest way to do that is with a double screened inner cover, which is what this is. It's an inner hive cover with screen on two sides. It also has a cutout for a rear entrance, as you can see right here, which allows bees there. But it can also be reversed to close that entrance and it'll keep robbers out. I like to use these on top of hive top feeders because it allows the evaporating water from your sugar syrup to not get trapped into your hive top feeders uh, as, and cause mildew. Um, and it also keeps out robbers, so no bees except for the bees inside the hive can get to your feeder with this screened inner cover on. Usually when you're using a hive top feeder, you have to take your inner cover off so that there's not an entrance that robber bees can get to the sugar syrup through. This gets rid of that problem and allows a lot of ventilation, which helps. So we're going to make this project today. Follow along with us and we're, we're glad you stopped by. Raw materials you're going to use for this project. You're going to need four pieces of lumber. Scrap will do. It's got to be at least two and a quarter on one face and at least an inch and a quarter on the other face. So two and a quarter by inch and a quarter. That'll be the dimensions you're going to cut it down to. So you need to have it a little over that. Your long sides are going to be 19 and 7 eighths inches long and your short sides are going to be 11 and a quarter inches long. And this is going to be for an eight frame double, for, uh, double screened in recover. Those dimensions will change of course for 10 frame, but I'll put that down in the, in the description for you guys. So let's get started and getting this cut down to length. As all of our final dimension cuts are made, you should end up with two pieces of stock that's 11 and a quarter long by inch and an eighth on one face by two and a quarter on the other face. Same dimensions for your long pieces except they're 19 and 7 eighths inches long. Four pieces of stock cut to those dimensions. Next we're going to wrap it out the long pieces so that the short pieces will fit into them. And then we'll put everything together. For this step, everybody, we're going to cut a one inch deep by two and a quarter inch long rabbit out of the each side of these long pieces. This can be done with your table saw. Just set your blade depth to one inch and make your first cut two and a quarter inches back from the end on both sides and then make additional passes to clear it all out. I'm going to do it with the router and you'll see how it's done. If you don't have a router, just do it with your table saw.
All right, after you've done your rabbits and your two long pieces, they should look like this with these ears cut out, basically what it looks like. That's the slot that your short board, your short piece is going to fit into. What we're going to do now is cut out the notch for our rear cover. You'll do that only in one piece of the short stock. Um, it's going to be three inches wide, okay, three eighths of an inch deep, and it'll come in an inch and a quarter. We'll go ahead and make that cut now. Alright guys, this is what you end up with. 3 8 inch deep channel, 3 inches wide, that comes back an inch and a quarter from the edge. Our last step with the router is going to be to set the depth to 1 inch. And we're going to set, we're going to inset the blade so that it's inside the fence and only an eighth of an inch of the blade is showing. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down both of these sides an inch up and cut a one eighth inch deep channel for our number eight hardware cloth. We'll go ahead and get that done now. All right, here's a close-up of what you want this to look like. It gives you a one inch tall by eighth of an inch deep channel down the length of your stock. This is what is going to be the ledge that your number eight hardware cloth or window screen wire sits on. Make sure when you cut this channel for the ledge for your screen wire, or your hardware cloth, that you cut it opposite the side that your entrance is on. You don't want this, this deeper channel cut through your entrance slot. So it should look like this. All right, so all the cuts are made. We've got it laid out on the table. All we have to do now is glue and screw the corners. Uh, I recommend screwing it or it'll pull it into square better. Um, and glue, just of course, because the glue is stronger than the joint's gonna be anyway, so, uh, and it helps seal it. Uh, so that's what we'll go ahead and get done now. We'll let you guys watch that process really quickly, and then we'll move on to putting the screen in. All right, guys, I've clamped up these corners just so they're held square. While I pre-drill, always remember to pre-drill your wood unless you like doing projects twice uh, and having all your wood split on you. Even if it's a soft wood like pine, which tends not to split, um, then I would, I would go ahead and pre-drill, which is what I'm going to do now. After you've got it pre-drilled, put your screws in these two corners and then we'll do the other two.
There you go, first corner complete. Now all we need to do is clamp and pre-drill our second corner, or our third and fourth corners, and then it'll be together and we can put in, put in our screen. I just flush up the outside edge and clamp both faces together so it can't move real tight. Put your pre-drill bit, your countersink bit back in. And put your last screws in. All right, there you go, guys. Nice and square. With rabbits, it's usually pretty simple to keep things square as long as your table saw is set up correctly and square itself. Now we'll go ahead and add the screen and we'll show you the finished project. All right, Beaks, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to use just some T50 staples and staple our hardware cloth all the way around on both sides and seal it up. You don't need many staples. The hardware cloth is pretty, pretty thick. The bees can't push it out of the way. Anywhere, anywhere it feels loose, I'll just put them in. That's one side done. Now we just flip it over and do the other side. If it needs to be trimmed at all, now's the right time to do it. I'm going to take one grid square off this end. Just so it fits a little better. Okay, I like that. Pull it tight. Pull it tight. There we go double screened inner cover with a reversible closable rear entrance. This is great when you're using hive top feeders so you can lock out robbers uh, as you'll put it on top of your hive top feeder with the entrance facing up so that bees can get in to the top screen but not down through the second screen to get to your feeder. One final note on the double screen inner hive cover. Since it is reversible, unlike the single screen covers, inner covers you see sold, the single screen inner covers have risers built into each end because of course you can't flip them over and reverse them to shut your rear entrance. So when you're using a double screen inner cover, you want to use shims on the ends. So after you put it on your hive, you just put a shim on each end and then put your cover on it. This works best with migratory covers, but if you have a standard telescoping uh, outer cover, you can just use a couple of shims so that it raises that cover up above the level of the top screen. And that way you get good air draft through uh, and it works perfectly. And of course you don't have to do that. If you use these with a uh, telescoping outer cover, just raising it up this much because it's pretty thick helps a lot, but it definitely is gonna be best with shims. So just shim up the two ends, put your cover on so that air goes between your outer cover and this inner cover and you're good to go. This will definitely improve your honey production. It'll definitely take stress off your queen and the hive trying to keep it cool and increase your brood production as well.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to visit funnybugbees.com. If you saw this video on YouTube, which you are, and watched it to the end, there's a coupon code for you to get 10% off of these in our store. That coupon code is YT double. It'll be in the description below. Put that in, you'll get 10% off of these if you don't have the tools necessary to make them or just don't feel like it. Again, thanks for visiting. Check out the coupon code. We'll see you in the next video.